Hello, good morning. Today is time for science. Are you ready? I know that all of you are ready for this science time. But let me introduce myself, ya. Yeah. My name is Jane, but you can call me Miss Jane. Today we will learn about sexual reproduction of flowering plants and asexual reproduction of plants. In earlier years you learn about flowering plants. There are hundreds of thousands of different flowering plants. The flowers come in many different shapes, size, and colors. The first one, I will tell you about sexual reproduction of flowering plants. Consists of part of flower, male flower parts, female flower parts, pollination, fertilization, seed dispersal, and different seed dispersal methods. Now look at these pictures. This diagram shows the main parts of a flower. The stamen is the male part of a flower. It makes pollen. Pollen spreads to the carpel of another flower. The carpel is the female part of a flower. The carpel receives the pollen from the stamen of another flower. The petals of some flowers are large and brightly colored. Petals can have a pleasant smell. The sepals are on the outside of a flower. In a young flower, the sepals protect the other parts of the flower. Next picture is male flower parts. You learned that the male part of a flower is the stamen. Look at this diagram of the inside of a flower. The stamen has two parts the anther and the filament. The anther is the part that makes and stores pollen. It is at the end of the stamen. The filament is the stalk that holds up the anther. The stamens of different flowers are different size and shapes. The arrangement and number of stamens inside different flowers varies. It's not always the same. Next, the picture of female flower parts. You learn that the female part of flower is the carpel. A carpel has three parts. The first one is stigma. The stigma receives pollen. The second is the ovary. The ovary contains ovules which will become seeds. And the third, the style. The style joins the stigma to the ovary. The carpels of different flowers are different size and shapes. The carpel arrangement inside different flower varies. Sometimes the carpel is in the center of the flower with the stem around it. Okay, next is the process of pollination. Pollination is when pollen from the anther of the one flower reaches the stigma of another flower that is of the same kind. This starts the process of making seeds. 
Wind carries the pollen of some flower. These flowers often have dull colors and small petals. Animals like mammals, birds, and insects carry the pollen of some plants. We call these animals pollinators. Plants that use pollinators to spread their pollen must attract the pollinators. Plants can do this by 1. Having a pleasant scent 2. Having flowers in bright colors 3. Making a sweet liquid called nectar When a pollinator visits a flower, pollen grains stick to each body. The pollinator carries the pollen to the next flower it visits. Okay, this diagram called fertilization. After pollination, fertilization is the next stage in reproduction. This is when seeds are produced. The process of fertilization happens like this. 1. A pollen grains lands on the stigma of a flower of the same kind. 2. The pollen grains grows a pollen tube through the center of the style to the ovary. 3. The male cell inside the pollen grains pays down the pollen tube to join with the female cell in the ovule. 4. After fertilization, the ovary changes into a fruit. The ovules become the seeds. The next is seed dispersal. When a fruit is ripe, the seed inside the are ready to grow into new plants. Seed dispersal is when a whole fruit or just its seeds move away from the parent's plant. The wind is carrying the dandelion seeds in the picture away from the parent's plant. If the condition where its seeds land are right, the seeds will germinate and grow into a new plant. Next, I will tell you about different seed dispersal method. Dispersal can be by human and animal, wind dispersal, and other methods of seed dispersal. But today, I will tell you about wind dispersal and other methods of seed dispersal. In wind dispersal, consists of three. The first one is gliders. Gliders is the fruits from some trees have stiff wings. They glide or spin in the wind. The second, parachute. Some fruits have like fluffy farts that look like little parachute. The third, shakers. Some fruits have opening at the top. When the wind bends the stalk, the seeds fall out, the wind blows them away. Next, about other methods of seed dispersal, consists of three. The first one is explosion. Explosion, some fruits with seed pods burst open, flinging out the seed. Drop and roll. The heavy round fruits drop from the tree and roll along the ground. Water. The small, like fruits of plants in or near water can float, or larger fruits have air inside. The air lets them float on water. Next, we will learn about a sexual reproduction of plants. Plants can reproduce sexual or asexually. 
in asexual the male and female parts of a plant do not join together asexual can be called vegetative reproduction some plants reproduce from parts of the roots stem or leaves by cutting grafting budding or layering making cutting a piece of the stem is placed in the water until roots grow grafting stems of two different plants are joined together we can grow plants by making cuttings from their stems leaves roots or branches the cut plants part is planted in soil watering them regularly helps them grow roots after a few days you will see a new baby plant forming on the branch or stem in crafting two plants are fused together one one plant is chosen for its roots this is called the rootstock two the other plant is chosen for its stem leaves or flowers this is called the skin the sound is cut from its plant and taps to the rootstock four over time both plants fuse together and grow as one plant as new plant soon grows through a bud from the seed budding budding is like grafting in grafting the whole cell with a few buds is joined to the rootstock in budding only one bud is joined to the rootstock this bud is cut off from the seed the rootstock is also cut to make space for the bud the bud is then joined to the rootstock and ripe tightly the bud grows in the new plant the new plant has some characteristic of the rootstock layering layering is making a stem or branch grow roots one in ground layerings part of a branch is buried in soil for it to grow roots two in air layering a part of the stem or branch is rubbed in with soil for it to grow roots. Okay, that's all for today. Thank you for your attention. But don't forget to do your assignment in Google Classroom. Bye-bye.